Hello again, YouTubers. Have another track for y'all. It's called The Second Death. Blessed and holy is he who has a part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death has no power. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. It is generally understood that the wicked after death are cast into the tormenting flames of hell. However, the final destination of the wicked is far more fearful than that. <coughs> Their eternal judgment is so horrible, so full of unimaginable terror and torment, that clear description of it eludes all human expression. In Revelation, it is simply called the second death. The second death is not hell. It is a place of such pain and terror that hell itself will be cast into it. Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 through 15. Hell is now used by God as a holding place for the unrighteous dead until the final judgment. After that, all who are in hell and hell itself are cast into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. The scriptures reveal frightening details <coughs> of the second death which awaits the damned of an awful judgment of the wicked. The psalmist wrote, They shall never see light. Psalms 49 verse 19 what a terrifying thought to be bound forever and able to die in a sepulchre of pitch blackness. The lake of fire burns with a flame that gives no light. Three times Jesus referred to this as outer darkness. Matthew chapter 8 verse 12 and Matthew 22 verse 13. And Matthew chapter 25 verse 30 adding there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth in that place King Solomon called this miserable place obscure darkness Proverbs chapter 20 verse 20 Jude and Peter used the phrase darkness of eternal darkness Jude 13 Second Peter chapter 2 verse 17 with the inadequate t tool of earthly language these wise men attempted to describe an indescribable chilling fact of eternity <coughs> of the second death Jesus suggested a dreadful element beyond the darkness when he said bind his feet and hands and cast him into outer darkness Matthew chapter 22 verse 13 in the lake of fire there will be no choices no not so much as a lift others no no not as much as to lift the hand or turn the head the damned will be tightly bound in blackness forever the most impressive testimony I've I have heard concerning this came from a sister who was taken in a vision to this final abode of the damned. <clears throat> With deep emotion, she labored to describe the darkness, the black, blackest darkness in this world. She said, as has a gray tint in, in comparison to that darkness. It is an oppressive darkness in which the individual is overwhelmed with a sense of absolute hopelessness, the utter absence of choice. Oh, the awesome wrath of God, an eternity of being bound in thick darkness and unrelenting pain with no choice about anything. My dear friend, let us obey God that we may be counted worthy to escape these things. The sister who tasted of the second death told of returning to consciousness with an awareness of someone in that hard horrid place screaming in terror only to find when she awoke that 
the screams were her own. But the second death is more than the thick, terrifying blackness, more than the eternal absence of all choice, more than utter hopelessness. Hopelessness. For there is also in the second death the element of unimaginable torment, likened in the scriptures to being burned alive. It is a place of everlasting punishment. The fire is not quenched. Matthew chapter 25 verses 41 through 46. Jesus hold his told his followers that the torment of the damned would be so insufferable that if necessary it would be worth cutting all parts of our bodies to avoid it. Matthew 18 verses 8 and 9. Mark chapter 9 verses 43 through 48. After Christ's, Christ's millennial reign on the earth, the devil will be cast into the lake of fire and sulfur and will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Revelation chapter 20 verse 10. Then following the white throne judgment, <coughs> death and hell, and anyone not found written in the book of life are also cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. We can scarcely imagine such horror. There is nothing in this universe like it. The fear of God. Paul knew the terror of the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 11 and Jesus himself feared God Hebrews 5 verse 7 but the wicked do not fear him Psalms 36 verse 1 Romans 3 verse 18 it is true as John said that the love of God cast out all fear 1 John 4 verses 17 and 18 but the fear is cast it cast out is the fear of everything except God. Jesus warned his disciples to fear him. Luke chapter 12 verse 4 and 5. The fear of God is clean. Psalms chapter 19 verse 9. For it causes those who have, have it to hate ungodliness. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13. It keeps us humble. Romans chapter 11 verses 17 through 22 and places us in, in a position to receive the blessings of God. <coughs> Psalms 10, excuse me, Psalms 103 verses 11 through 17. It inspires us to speak against evil. Psalms 139 verses 19 and 20 and to praise with worship him who inhabits eternity Revelation 14 verse 7 Revelation 19 verse 5 Noah was moved by the fear of God to build the ark Hebrews 11 verse 7 and those who are of like faith today are moved by that same fear to prepare for the coming destruction of this creation. For the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great roar, and the elements, consumed with burning heat, shall be destroyed, and earth and the works that are in it shall be burned up. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 10 Yes, the heavens and the earth that exist now will be destroyed, and God will create new heavens and new earth <coughs> for his chosen people. Heaven and earth shall pass away, and Jesus said Jesus, but my words shall never pass away. Destruction is determined for this whole creation. And except for those who obey God, it is inescapable 
How thankful we are for Jesus, our refuge from the approaching storm. He is the only hope for mankind, and He is the on only hope we need. There is no other by whom we can be saved from the coming wrath. Acts 4 verse 12 Let us quickly humble ourselves to, to Him who died for us. We rejoice because the only one who is able to save us from the second death loves us. God's offer of forgiveness and cleansing from sin through the name of Jesus is still being made. Thankfully, the Spirit's call, voiced by the ancient prophet Isaiah, has not yet been repealed. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the, the unrighteous man his thoughts. <clears throat> Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. <clears throat> and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 6 and 7. Christ Jesus offers us hope of eternal life. Hope of escaping the terrors of the damned. May God grant us grace to take advantage of this precious offer. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.